But we're looking at uh, some more focused things like uh, a camp for high schoolers this summer oh. that, we're, that we're working on. So um, some, some things like that. Um, I'm really interested in product development. Rosie talked about apps. I'm very interested in something that, that looks at a local uh, social network analysis that I think you know can continue um, both well, I mean, the problem with all this product development is it can't take away from your core mission, right? So you have to figure out, I mean, the ideal product would be something that's created and this is a little engine that just keeps generating revenue that, that doesn't cause you any ethical problems. Whatever that product is, that's the perfect product, right? And in a minute, I, I'm, I'm going to sit down and probably Rosie will too, and then we can just throw it open to this. But yeah. those are the kinds of things that we're talking about in products. Yeah, business. the thing, the, the, uh, you mentioned the key thing is to track from the core mission. Training and these other things is, are great, and we'll do a little of it. But you know, to do an event right, it takes a tremendous amount of time and effort. And really, someone whose job it is. The Texas Tribune has a someone they hire just to do events, where they'll bring in a speaker and they'll have the issues they'll talk about, and they charge people to come. And when I know when I talked to them about when they started, it, it stunned me that in Austin they didn't have anything like that. Well, in the Bay Area, Bay Area where we are, we have you know something called the Commonwealth Club, there's the World Affairs Council. And because it's sort of the intellectual, I'm sure maybe it's the same bully, there's so many events, it wasn't worth it. In fact, I realized they were charging, I'm probably eight or ten times a year, I'm the person they asked to moderate the events and I never get paid. But if somebody's making money, I was thinking this doesn't make sense. But it's just not something we're probably going to get into right now. I think there's a lot of potential revenue in data, on all kinds of data sets. And, you know, one of the things, the sticky data, somebody mentioned that earlier, Matt, I think you in your presentation, we get traffic, but one of the things we are doing with our tracker, we'll build a data set for a high traffic website. Again, our model is not a destination. Uh, you know, we'll have some 2,000 uniques on a story on our site, and we, it might have, a, in California, a million uniques on the newspaper sites. And we're basically charging a flat rate. Well, that has to change. It has to change when other people are using it. And data is really sticky, but people want it. So again, it's, it's building the infrastructure to do it and seeing the opportunity. I mentioned Patch, well a year ago Patch, I think Patch started in March a year ago. They, that wasn't in any kind of thinking we had. And suddenly you have Patch backed up by AOL, who wants hyper-local content. So those are opportunities. The same thing with a, a, an iPad. I mean, an iPad, we weren't talking about an iPad 18 months ago. Now there's what, how many, 15 million were sold last year. So again, that's a new platform. How does our content work on this new platform? None of us really have the answer, and Apple doesn't. But they want high-quality, unique content. So that's what all of us can do. Some on a statewide level, local level, state, local, national, international. So that's where I think the opportunity is. And last thought, I really believe that you know the high-quality, unique, trusted content is going to have value not only socially but financially. We're in a moment now of tremendous change, and the key to that, what we can do and the journalists can do, is the storytelling. We haven't mentioned storytelling. Storytelling is crucial. Data, great, great information, if it's obtuse and dense, doesn't go anywhere. Even with all the technology and all the different platforms, the key is the story. So that's something you know we believe in and we can do. And I think that's really the value of the journalism. You know, at the most simple level, is the story. You know, I keep threatening. The Everybody knows the story about the sign, it's the economy, stupid. I keep threatening to put up at our newsroom at iNews, it's the context, stupid. Everything is about the context. So, Should I, we sit oh, down? Sure. How, if we, I think if we sit down. For, just yeah, if we sit down, people would just I wanted to oh, oh, specifically ask a couple of people in the room. I, man, I coerced um, Mike Higgins, uh, who is a media consultant, to, to come here today. And I managed to convince Harry Evans who is uh, CEO of Closely.com and a member of the uh, Demo Center Advisory Board, correct? And, and then, of course, Frank as well. I wonder if any of the three of you might want to uh, react to what you just heard and perhaps, perhaps you have some advice for them. Like, do you have an idea for that magical little engine that generates ethical money? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot where he is. Right? He's going to charge me for it. See, we yeah. I guess I have one reaction listening to, to the talk. Uh, I teach entrepreneurship. This is a problem that all entrepreneurs face, which is where do you want to spend your time? And the most
most successful entrepreneurs spend their time with customers, understand the customers. And I know, I know you didn't mean it this way, but it came across as kind of an unpleasant, I have to do this, I don't really, you know, I want to have to hire somebody to do it for me. You're the face of your business. You're the one who's got to get out there and sell it. Yeah. You know, sales is a dirty word, I know that. But that's what you're doing, perhaps. Yeah, I just, I, I enjoy the selling. I don't like asking. That's my problem. And, uh, Same thing. Yeah, and I think I realized, you know, that I, I have, a, I think this morning I call this performing bears. And I actually have a slideshow <laughs> I do sometimes where it tells a story, and, and, and I have this transition from being a newspaper guy, and then there's a picture of a little beggar in the street. And I said, I became a beggar. But then I realized I wasn't begging. I had to become really eloquent. There's a picture of Fred Astaire. Top hat, dancing. So I, I agree, and that's I said that to Laura this morning. I said you, you, the key thing you have to do is figure out, free yourself up so you can go out and do the performance. Which I actually think is one of the most fun. I mean, when I showed that map of all the partners that we have, it is invigorating to talk with people who value what you value and to be able to help them. So the success that iNews has had in its short lifespan is all because there's a pain in the market. All of these news outlets know that they want to produce quality in-depth news, but they can't, or at least not as much as they want. And they know their audiences want and expect and have been disappointed about their inability to produce all that they, all that they demand. And so, I mean, that's classic entrepreneurship too. There's a pain in the market and we fill it. But the key thing, is, even beyond the what I call the publishers, is are going to be the people who can fund you. That's really where both mm -hmm. of us should be so, spending so more of our time. So here, I guess the analogy is the the funders are our angel investors because we don't think we're going to return. What? The funders are your customers. Hmm. Oh. If you don't understand what the sales process is, you're going to have to do I think he's talking about the civic, I mean, that, the customers, what they're looking for, if you're talking about foundation funders, is that civic ROI thing. And, you know, I, can I just take a second? I don't want to, like, monopolize, but I just thought this was no, really interesting. Really everybody may, everybody may think this is really stupid, but, um, you know, I've been operating on this assumption all along, and I still believe it, that you can't rely on foundation funding ongoing, and you have to diversify your funding, and that's what I'm working really hard on doing. But I had a really interesting meeting with a woman, actually Barbara O'Brien, who was just the lieutenant governor, and is now working for my old employer, the Keaton Foundation. And she said to me, well, that's good. You need to go out and look for other sources of revenue. But she said, when I was running the children cam children's campaign, Colorado Children's Campaign, and she was the founding person there, she said, I got to a point where suddenly it was like we were in trouble because the foundations were like, time for you to stand on your own two feet, go away. And she said she convened all of her funders, or they convened themselves, and they said, what would we do if the children's campaign was gone? They're a child advocacy organization. They're never going to make any money that we can think of. But we'd have to reinvent it. And she said from that moment on, when they realized that they were providing an essential mission to the community, the funders just said, we're going to have to fund these guys in perpetuity. And they've been doing it for like 25 years now. And she said to me, I'm not sure that you shouldn't t go to your funders and say that you're providing this vital civic good of great education coverage for Colorado, which is no longer existing anywhere, and just say, you guys just have to step up and see us as a pillar of the community and a civic good, and you need to keep funding us. And I said, Marketing campaign, we're going to talk about. Yeah. That's really what we have to do as well about what we do. But it's cut so against everything we hear everywhere else, which is no, you've got to go out and find other sources well, of revenue. Remember, there are multiple legs on the stool. Right. So just because you say that you're going to have to keep the money coming right. doesn't okay. mean that you're not bringing other right. streams oh, yeah. in. So, so, so one, one thing I want to make sure we're clear about I think what we were referring to before is found the national foundations being angels and, and their lack of ability to, to sustain that kind of revenue. Absolutely, absolutely agree. Right. So, so, so when we get into our little session, that's one of the things that I was going to find. I don't think you can. Right, exactly. So, so one, you know, one thing that 
you know, as a form of publisher in the traditional sense, um, you know, the, the two terms that I hated and, well, three terms, I used to hate yield management, but we don't deal with that anymore. But, but you know, COGS and ROI, right? If you're gonna be bringing on a one-to-one -one or you're bringing on a one-to-three basis, as publishers, and let's face it, I know that many of us are reluctant publishers, but we are all publishers now. As publishers, we have to get a handle on the cost of goods sold, right? That includes total human hours for both the production of the content, the sale of the content, the distribution of the content. Second of all, ROI. We have many members who feel compelled to give their content away for free. I don't dispute that. What I ask in question is, can you quantify the ROI when you do that? So in other words, if you're gonna put content out onto X number of sites, can you figure out what you get back for that in the way of impressions, page views, click-throughs, whatever you define. The, the terms of the ROI are yours to define, but have those metrics going in, measure those metrics coming out, and don't kid yourself that if you build it, they'll come, because they don't. And I think that these are hard lessons learned. And, and I don't want to soapbox it here, but I will present. <laughs> well, I, I will, you know, here's what I say to those folks when I go out and say, okay, now we're getting close to that point where we're starting to charge you. We did $200,000 worth of journalism last year, and you can have it for a fraction of that. So if you get $200,000 worth of journalism for $20,000, that's a good deal. As long as you have a community that values that journalism. But, and, and the indication is, I mean, you ask any publisher, even if you set aside whether, whether there's data behind it, how many times have you, publisher, in the last three months gotten a call from somebody who said, I can read the paper in half an hour and there's nothing, or maybe not even that, 15 minutes and there's nothing in there anymore. There's a sense out there that people want quality. AP did some really interesting uh, studies, maybe close to two years ago now, where they were talking, they watched how people use news and talked to them about what, uh, what the issues were. And what they found overwhelmingly was that people were frustrated with the constant barrage of incremental um, information and wanted context and couldn't find it. Again, it's the context. Stupid, right? Um, so I, I think the demand's out there. It's been very hard to measure. Well, I, and Robert, you've done that too, you know. The value you create is measured in the community that values you, mm -hmm. right? And you talk about analytics, and you're a distributed content platform, right? Where you said there'll be 20,000 units on your site, but there'll be a million units in the universe who consume your content, right? So communities mm -hmm. aren't together, they're not centralized, they're all over the place, they're polarized, but that community values your content. So the ability to articulate that community is your ability to drive more value, right? right. And you and talk about analytics, and you know, I pitched, we had a startup called Alchemy, and we were a sentiment engine, but we went to the AP, and we pitched them before they had digital fingerprinting, this like, ability to basically look for, throughout the entire internet, all instances of their mm -hmm. copyright material. Because I was convinced that there was a hell of a lot more out there than they were tracking. Yeah, and they're standard. creating another tracking tool now, that's right. Yeah.